What's up everybody, Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and you are watching Ojeda Live. Countdown achieved. It's time for Ojeda Live. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Ojeda Live. Let me go ahead and get my phone set up here so I can see everybody who's on. Uh, for those of you who are already on, make sure you're hitting those thumbs up, hitting those like buttons, because that matters, and we really appreciate uh, it when you guys do that. So come on, it'll pop up here here in a second, and we'll kick this thing off. All right, almost, almost, it'll get there. I think it's coming up here. Here we go. Okay, and yep, I'm already seeing everybody on here, so that's outstanding, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Okay, so the top story that I have is that Donald Trump is in a world of hurt, folks, and I'm not sure if people really understand how how his life is going to be affected uh, for the rest of his life, and that's an absolute fact. Right now, uh, we know that he's in trouble, and we know that he knows that he is in trouble. That's why he is posting all these truths and tweets and things like that that are attacking everybody because he knows that he's cooked and he knows that they got him. Uh, we know that Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis absolutely has indictments and she says that they are imminent and what that means is that they are coming. So I look for indictments within the next seven to 10 days. I believe we're going to see Donald Trump get indicted first. But do you remember Alvin Bragg, who happens to be the Manhattan, New York district attorney? And all of a sudden, he's popped up on the radar. Now, in the beginning, he looked like when he got into office that he was going to pretty much walk away from this. And a lot of people were angered. Because they were like, look, this guy, you know, he said he was going to, you know, do what was right. And then when he get put in the position, it's like he no longer wants to go after Donald Trump. Well, now, all of a sudden, he's now bringing everything to a grand jury in order to see if they've got enough evidence to indict Donald Trump. And what they are doing this for is all about the hush money payment. And I've told people, you know, Michael Cohen went to prison because of what he did. He was the finance chair. But just because your finance chair does something wrong doesn't mean that the candidate, him or herself, is free and clear. Because once again, you are responsible for the good and the bad that your team conducts. And that's just the way that it is. And I'm telling you, folks, uh, this is absolutely coming back to kick him in the butt. And, 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 and Stormy Daniels is now all over the news. And of course, you know, Donald Trump is Donald Trump. Now he's, he's resorted to childish behavior, calling her a horse face. I mean, come on, let's just be upfront and honest. That's what Donald Trump does. Donald Trump has the mentality of a 12 year old child and it has never changed. This is what happens when mommy and daddy doesn't hug you enough when you're a child. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And we also have to understand that Jack Smith is a part of all this stuff too. Jack Smith is absolutely going over everything. And once again, this is a guy who is meticulous with what he does. You know, we have three different jurisdictions that are all about to charge Donald Trump really, really soon. And those trials, those trials will most likely all kick off before the end of this year. So if they start indicting Donald Trump now, I would say that by October, November, these things will absolutely be in court. And I'm telling you, folks. It's going to get ugly for Donald Trump. What do you think there, uh, Anna? What do you think? Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to hear what Jack Smith has, what uh, Georgia, especially being here in Georgia. I'm very, I, I think they talked recently about having uh, some suggestions for the one of the higher up courts here. I know that's a case that's really made them upset. And well, hearing that phone I mean, call, at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. 
you know? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, to me, that's the smoking gun. That's the nail in the coffin. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, it, it, the the evidence is out for all to see. You know, if you listen to that phone call, Donald Trump absolutely was trying to pressure a secretary of state, yeah. and he was threatening him with, with people are, are going to be happy with you. He was threatening him to find him 11,780 votes. I mean, it's that's a smoking gun. Yeah. And and I without a shadow of a doubt, there's nothing that he can do. Donald Trump can sit and say that he didn't mean that, but all you have to do is listen to the, the, the telephone call and you know that he did. And that's the best part about this is that Donald Trump, who literally has lived an entire life where he believes that he's above the law, that he believes he's smarter than everybody and he has the ability to, to get away with things. You know, it's now all going to come to a head. And I'm going to tell you, he's done. The Georgia, the Georgia's, a, 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 that's, that's, a, that's a, that's a no deal. That, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. And then if you look at uh, the Stormy Daniels thing with the payment, I believe wholeheartedly that Donald Trump's going to go down with that. The, uh, the fake electors. I mean, there's so many things. And, and once again, you know, we've got people that are all over him. Donald Trump, the Trump organization has already been found guilty and has already basically been fined with a $250 million fine. And, you know, now they're asking for sanctions against Donald Trump and his kids in New York. I mean, it's every day is a bad day for Donald Trump. But before we go any further, let's go ahead and do us a roll call. Okay, we got Wayne uh, uh, Pakanon. We have Elizabeth uh, Gransky. We have Kyle Smith. What's up, my brother? Always good to see you. Uh, Wanda Woy is on here. Brenda Goodson is on here. David Miller is on. We got Deb McCarthy. How you doing, Deb? You know I love you to death. Uh, we got Michael Boyles on here. We got Cindy Gibbons. We have Kathy Young on here. We have Monica Nava. We have Joy Dixon on here. Uh, we have Joe Ellum Clayton on. We got Jennifer Peck from Southern California. You know we got Becca from North Kakalaki. What's up? We got Kathy Young from Phoenix. We have Charlene Antamon. We've got my brother Ben Persglove, who's always providing me with the good numbers concerning uh, uh, Ukraine. We have Deborah Morris on here. Diane Topabianco. We have Cassie Hicks. We've got Linda Quinn, lots of people that I've never seen on here before. Uh, Country Favor Austin, uh, Antonia Monaco. Everybody remember, hit them thumbs up, hit them like buttons, hit them hearts, because that's important. And once again, at the end of this, I hope you all will also hit them share buttons, because we got to educate people. We got to spread the word so that we can reach as many people as possible. Larry Blatt, my paratrooper brother, APWU 2577 out of Long Island, Jake Sheave. Jill Walker, I appreciate each and every one of you guys uh, when you come on here every night and give me the opportunity to speak to each and every one of you guys. It means so much. And I also love those of you that are from other countries, Fred Harriet from Canada. You know, we've got all kinds of amazing people that come on here because make no mistake about it, the, the, the topics in the news in the United States of America they also mean things to people in other countries. You know, the way the United States goes is the way others go as well. And that's why it's important. And that's why it's important for us to always put truth to power and speak to as many people as possible. Paula Bradley's on here. Carol Johnson. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. OK, so we have a couple other stories that I think are important enough that need to be brought forward. First and foremost, Hunter Biden is going to start fighting back. Now, I wrote something down here, and I want to read it verbatim. Individuals for whom there is considerable reason to believe violated various federal laws in accessing, copying, manipulating, and or disseminating Mr. Biden's personal computer data. Okay, so everybody knows that there was a guy at a computer store that said he had Hunter Biden's laptop, and I believe that they passed it over to Rudy Giuliani. And at the end of the day, what they're saying is, is that there's a lot of things that uh, it's not right for them to access because first and foremost, whether you like it or not, Hunter Biden is a private citizen. 
Hunter Biden isn't like the children of Donald Trump who all got positions that paid them crazy salaries while their daddy just happened to be in the White House. Uh, that uh, Hunter Biden right now is not working for the government. He's a private citizen, and they've been going after him. But uh, he's going to go after the computer repair shop owner uh, who now fi uh, fancies himself as a political speaker that apparently handed it over to Giuliani. Tucker Carlson and Steve Bannon are on the list now because they've been stoking the fires about this. And, and once again, you got to be careful with the things that you're saying. You know, uh, that's one of the reasons why, you know, Fox News is in such hot water, because whenever they come out with the lies, and yes, it was lies when we're talking about the voting machines, Dominion, the Dominion voting machines were not compromised. But what happened was, was that they all lied about it because that was the best uh, uh, lie that they could tell that could convince people otherwise. And because of that, because that they have no facts whatsoever, and because that they can't take any facts into a court of law because those facts doesn't exist, then the Dominion has a massive lawsuit against all of these people to include the organizations like Fox News and OAN and Newsmax. All of them participated in this. All of them did. And they're all going to go down for this. Uh, Rupert Murdoch is going to find himself in a, he's in a hot seat right now. And we don't know how that's going to go, but make no mistake about it. These people are going to find themselves on the carpet and they're going to have to answer. And it's going to happen, folks. It's going to happen. Tucker Carlson is another one who's been put on notice. Uh, and, and, and once again, they're saying that Hunter, that, uh, I'm sorry, but Tucker Carlson is one of them that they are expecting is going to have to go on and basically make statements correcting what he said which is which is really uh it's it's that's what you call humble pie you know here's a person who threw so many stones at hunter biden but at the end of the day he's going to be made to have to give a retraction and uh you know i'm going to tell you fox news as well this is going to be interesting when we finally get to see what's going to come about but I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be sued. And this lawsuit with Dominion is worth $1.6 billion. And I don't know if that's everybody is, is $1.6 million because they're going after each and every one of the people that were on Giuliani's team, Giuliani, Sidney Powell, all those. Uh, they're going after Fox. They're going after Hannity. They're going after Tucker Carlson. It's going to be rough. They're going after Rupert Murdoch. It's going to be rough. And we all just get to sit back and wait to see what's going to happen. And then the other one I got is that, ladies and gentlemen, MAGA, MAGA insiders are hoping that Donald Trump dies. You heard what I had to say. MAGA insiders behind closed doors are basically hoping that Donald Trump will just wither away and die. And the reason for that is because they know that nobody can control the mouth of this orange jackaloon. And they know that Donald Trump will drag the entire party into the abyss with him before he ever admits to any anything whatsoever. Donald Trump is controlling the Republican Party, even though his four years in office was nothing but a train wreck these last two years out of office, he's been nothing but a train wreck. They know that Donald Trump running for president is going to hurt anybody who doesn't bow down to him. And if anybody beats Donald Trump and becomes the nominee, they know that Donald Trump's base which is the poorly educated because they're all QAnon, you know, jackaloons and things like that. And they know that those Donald Trump supporters, those QAnon wackadoos will never support anybody other than Donald Trump because these people believe that Donald Trump has been sent by God. They believe that. We still have people that will look into the camera and say, 
Donald Trump is still running the country behind the scenes. And the person that's supposedly in Joe Biden's office is really a puppet. And if that's the case, then why don't these Republicans who believe that Donald Trump is real run, really running everything, why don't they support that guy that may be Donald Trump in disguise looking like Joe Biden? Why don't they all just go ahead and support the person that's currently sitting in the seat? If it's really Donald Trump in disguise, then why don't they just support him? Folks, Donald Trump has a stranglehold on the Republican Party. And the reason why he has a stranglehold on the Republican Party is because the Republican Party gave in to him. The Republican Party allowed him to control everything. And all of those in the Republican Party ended up bowing down and basically worshiping Donald Trump. And that's what they did. They, they fought against him. They knew, you know, Lindsey Graham said, if we elect Donald Trump, we will deserve what happens to our party. But yet he was one of the first ones when Donald Trump finally made it to run and insert lip on backside. And everybody knows that that's exactly, exactly what happened. And it happened with many, many others. We've got people in this country that specifically run and they run on a Donald Trump name because they know that that's the only way that they're ever going to be able to win office because they also know that they got a lot of poorly educated people in their areas that happen to be, I don't know, racist, because we know that Donald Trump is as racist as they come. Homophobic. We know Donald Trump is homophobic as they come. We know that, uh, yeah, anybody that's light brown to dark brown, Donald Trump doesn't like. And there's a lot of people that absolutely support him specifically because of that. The KKK, the Nazis in this country, they follow Donald Trump because why? Because Donald Trump is them through and through. And that's an absolute fact. Okay, so I know that we got us some memes today. So no, hold on. Stop. Anna, let's talk a little bit. What do you think? What do you think about the stuff that I just talked about, about, about Donald Trump and the Republicans wanting, you know, literally him to die? Um, so I think we're actually having some technical difficulties on my end. Uh, I'm getting feedback that it's really bad feedback from my microphone. So, okay. Well yeah. then don't worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and move forward. Just go ahead and put the first meme up there. Hunter's laptop! Hunter's laptop! Okay, so this meme right here, I'm going to read this. Uh, woman, a woman, can I have birth control? Republicans, no. The woman, I couldn't get birth control, so I got pregnant. Can I have an abortion? Republicans, no. The woman says, you prevented me from having an abortion, so I'm carrying the fetus. But my employer won't provide reasonable, uh, hold on, let me, uh, let me, let me go to my page because that one's a little blurry. So, okay. So uh, you prevented me from having an abortion. So, uh, so I'm carrying the fetus, but my employer won't provide reasonable accommodations and is threatening to fire me. Would you please pass the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act? The Republicans, no. The woman says, I had the baby, but I'm out of work. Can I have WIC and food stamps until I get back on my feet? The Republicans, their thoughts are no. So I found a job, but it doesn't offer me insurance. Can I have government guaranteed insurance? Republicans, no. My kid got sick and I got fired because I missed time caring for him. Can I get unemployment? Republicans, no. The woman, I'm having a hard time getting my kid from school consistently. Can we fund after school programs? Republicans, no. I'm prepared to work to support my family. Can you make sure that a full-time job's minimum wage is enough to do that? Republicans, no. But what's the matter with you or your family that working two jobs can't lift you out of poverty? And that's where it ends. And, and, and folks, look, I know that this is a long meme, but this is a meme that's absolutely important. And this is a meme that is reality. It's reality. You know, we got all these people that claim to be pro-life and all they care about is the fetus. The moment that the child is born, they are the party. 
that cuts the programs that feed the child, that clothe the child and educate the, the child. And that's a fact. That's a fact. They absolutely do not want to allow the mothers to be able to get assistance. And if they can get assistance, they want to make sure that there's roadblocks everywhere that make it harder and harder for them to be able to, to take care of their families. The Republican Party is not about the working class people. And if you just take the time to think about what's going on right now in this country and understand all the issues that are going on, inflation is an issue. We have a war going on that is absolutely affecting the entire globe. There are issues with, with, with workers. There's issues all across the country. But all you're hearing about right now, the only thing that the House of Representatives are even acting as if matters is basically focusing on putting targets on people in the LGBTQ community. Every single day, we hear more and more about the transgenders in this country. And at the end of the day, the transgenders don't even make up 0.00001% of the population. And yet, if you look at the Republicans and you talk to the Republicans in power, that seems like the most important thing out there, fighting that battle. Hey, hey, and that absolutely Richard, shows you how little they care. You sound a little, you sound a little upset. You pissed off? I'm always pissed off. What do we got? Do you want to know what really pisses me off? Check this out. I've never seen this one. Uh, a virgin court, or I'm sorry, a Virginia court has offered, uh, I'm sorry, has ordered the nursing mother of a five-month-old to stop breastfeeding in order to better suit the divorcing father's custody demands. Wow. 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 That's, that's, that's horrific. That's really sad. I mean, first and foremost, I do believe that the best thing for a child uh, would be to nurse from the mother. And once again, if you take the child off of that, then what happens is now the mother and I guess the divorce father are going to have to now come up with the funding for the baby formula and all those things right there. So that's that's really kind of messed, messed up. Uh, in child custody dispute, breastfeeding mom is ordered to use bottle. That's 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 horrible. And I guarantee you that if you was to go to speak to any doctor that focuses on, you know, prenatal care and things like that, they would tell you that the best thing that a mother can do is actually to breastfeed. So, yeah, that's messed up. All right. I know we got some more memes. What else we got? Oh, my goodness gracious. Everybody knows I can't stand this Jack Loon. Senator Joe Manchin, Fed's not taking my gas stove. Fi uh, files bill to protect. This guy is the biggest joke that exists. This guy right here is nothing more than a Republican in, 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 in sheep's clothing. This guy is a horrible human being. Let me tell you something. In 2013, I was actually invited to the State of the Union in Washington, D.C. as this Jackaloon's guest. And I didn't think about it at first, but really what I was, was I was his his token military veteran that he wanted to basically act like he cared. So they send me, I go to the State of the Union. It, it was a great event. It was an honor to be there. And afterward, I get all this stuff. You know, they send me a flag. They send me the speech. They send me my ticket that I used to get into the room. Uh, they send me all of this stuff. And I go get it framed and it's got a picture of Joe Manchin in it. And over the past couple of years, I've realized that Joe Manchin is absolutely a horrible human being. He doesn't care about nobody. Everything in West Virginia is always about Joe. He doesn't care about the people. He cares about himself. The only people in West Virginia that do any well, that do well, are Joe Manchin's family. They have controlled the Democratic Party, and they finally have been removed of that. In the last race, the Democrats finally were able to get rid of everybody. And now Joe Manchin no longer controls the daggone Democratic Party. But I will tell you what I did. I had my frame taken back to Hobby Lobby. And I had them re to disassemble it. And I purchased a new photograph of President Barack Hussein Obama, who absolutely was phenomenal for eight years. 
and that was put back in that case and then it was re-put together. So it's going to be on my walls, but it will never, ever have a Joe Manchin face on it ever again. Because that guy right there is a horrible person. So uh, do we got any more memes? Okay, this one here, folks. The MAGA Republican cult is comparing traitor Trump to Jesus Christ. Fair enough. Nail him up on the cross, and when he's dead, throw him in a stone-sealed tomb. If he rises up in three days, I'll admit I was wrong. Let me tell you something, folks. You know, we now know, we now know that the only reason the evangelicals went with him is because Michael Cohen and them got the information about the uh, the pool boy that was with the wife of, I believe, was it Franklin Graham Jr.? I believe that was him. I, I'm not sure of the last name, but I think it was I think it was Franklin Graham. Uh, hold for a second here. Uh, let me pull this up. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it was it was Franklin Graham and his wife. And because of that, because they were willing to hide that, and make no mistake about it. If Franklin Graham would have said, no, you're not going to pressure me, they would have probably just announced it and 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 had him, you know, they would have probably been the ones who 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 was it Falwell? Falwell. Yeah, Falwell. Uh Okay, somebody said it was Falwell. I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to find myself in any court battle. Uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. is what it was. I don't know why I always say Franklin Graham. I don't know why. But Jerry Falwell Jr., I guess, was the one. But because they said, we're going to keep this quiet, but I want you to get all these other evangelicals to support us. And, of course, you guys do realize that they're all in it. All of those evangelicals are all in it together. They're all about grifting and basically robbing the people. And they all come together and said, sure, we'll all support Donald Trump. And and let me tell you something. They made a lot of money. They made a lot of money. You know, that one person that was Donald Trump's spiritual advisor at the White House. I mean, she was literally telling people, write me a $30,000 check, blah, 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 blah. You know, these people are horrible people. And they don't care about the people. All they care about is the money. And every one of them will burn in hell. Every one of them will burn in hell for what they've done. Jesse Duplantis or whatever his name, they will burn in hell for the things that they have done. And when they are gone, you're not going to hear more about them. They'll disappear like, like all the rest of these jackaloons that do this garbage. So, all right. Anybody else do we got? Any other, any other memes? We can move on to hate mail if you want to do that. Oh, well, let's check out some hate mail, folks. But I didn't win the election. I lost bigly. Ah! Let's discuss Mr. Richard Ojeda, the biggest jackaloon, Trump 2024, uh, voted Sherman Facebook. Voted. Voted. Red. <laughs> Vote red. <laughs> Vote red. Vote red. Okay. Okay. Vote red. Uh, come on, man. I mean, look, look, I, look I, I would be more than happy to debate you uh, anytime, any day. I mean, you know, Sherman. first and foremost, every, uh, yes, yeah, Sherman, everybody knows, everybody knows that the stuff that I talk about on here can all be looked up online because what I do is I go and I find news stories because that's what I do all day long is looking for, for things in the news that we can talk about on this live. So it's not like Richard Ojeda is telling you these things. These are things that actually take place in a court or, 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 or taking place in the news cycle. So you can sit and scream all you want. And you know what? Go ahead and vote red. Go ahead and vote red. If you're a working class citizen and you vote red, you're a moron. You're literally letting them beg on take from you. If you are a person that is not filthy rich and you vote Republican, you're a moron. You have literally been duped. You're not that smart. You're easily duped. That's the only reason why. That's it. And or or you're just a racist. Your 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 curtains in your house are really rebel flags. Yeah. That's how you are and that's who you are if you believe in Donald Trump. So, yeah. 
yeah, just another, just another jackaloon that 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 hasn't woken up yet. And I'm gonna tell you, you gotta be you gotta be pretty dense in the mind after these last two years to not have come to the conclusion that Donald Trump is a fraud. I mean, literally, almost everybody who has been sentenced to prison now says we only did it because Donald Trump told us to. Donald Trump's at fault. Yeah, and that's where we're at. So, folks, there we have it. Another episode. We hit the 30-minute mark. Uh, I want each and every one of you guys to keep hitting them thumbs up, hit them heart button, and make sure that every one of you guys share this video as soon as we're done. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, Anna, for another episode. Everybody else, be good to each other. Be safe out there. Sappers clear the way. Airborne all the way. Hot 10, hot. Eyes right.